In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the web challenges that are created for the Integrity CTF called Bug Report Repo. I'm recording this video before the CTF event, so fingers crossed everything went okay and there were no major issues with the infrastructure. I've never organized or hosted a CTF before, so if there were some issues, go easy. Anyway, the description for the challenge is I started my own bug bounty platform. The UI is in the early stages, but we've already got plenty of submissions. I wonder why I keep getting emails about a critical vulnerability report, though. I don't see it anywhere on the system. And we've got this URL to connect to. I'm actually going to go and demonstrate the solution locally because this isn't currently live. So let me just switch over to my Parrot VM. All right, so I've moved over to Parrot, and this is the website that you'll be greeted with whenever you go to the URL. And basically, we've got 10 bug reports here. You can enter an ID for each one of them. Oh, let me just minimize that a bit. So whenever you enter an ID, it'll say that the bug report is either open or closed. One thing to note is you can't actually see some of the information here. So this is saying that the bug report is from Frank, but we don't see that in the table. And if you have a look through the source and stuff, you won't find that because this is being pulled from the server. Anyway, we can go through all 10 of those and see which ones are open and closed. What we'd probably do then is maybe go and have a look at our burp suite history and we'll see that we've got a WebSocket request. So we can go into WebSocket history and we can actually see that each of those requests have, okay, not these ones. Yeah, each of those requests have gone through and we've got back a response. So let us send one of those to the repeater. The description said that somebody keeps emailing about a bug report and isn't getting a response, but we don't see it on the system. So Maybe we can just try and increment the ID to see if there's any other bug reports which just aren't being listed here. And very quickly, we'll find that we have one from an ethical hacker, which is open. We could also just do that here as well. So it's quite easy to find that there is a bug report which isn't shown on the page. So I think that's a bit of a hint that you need to find out what this bug report is. Maybe it's got a flag in it or some further hint. So what else might we do here to try and find the flag. Well, if you come across a text box on a site like this, especially if it's retrieving things from a database, a good thing to do is try and enter in a quote and see does some kind of error show up and it says, oops, something went wrong. So let's go back to our repeater and let's test this out a little bit. We've got a JSON object here and I'm just gonna change this and say one and, no, oh, that's not and, one and one equals one. So we're using a condition there and it's coming back to say that that is open. What if we change that to one equals two, which obviously it doesn't. And now we get bug not found. So we've got a Boolean SQL injection here. So we're able to use this Boolean condition to determine what the response is. So maybe we can use that then to retrieve characters from the database and find out what that bug report says. So you have a couple of options here. You could write your own script, which is just going to send off these WebSocket requests and slowly retrieve the characters from the database. You might also go and have a look online, see if there's any existing solutions for SQL injection over WebSockets. And there's an article from Rayhan from 2021. I actually saw this featured in a Hack the Box machine before where there was a WebSocket protocol used and we were able to use this script in order to feed it through SQL maps. So this will basically create a proxy and we can take a copy of this and go and just start changing some of the values that are in it. It will need some additional changes to work because, well, let me actually go and show that. Let's have a look at the SQL proxy. A couple of changes that are needed. The first is we're currently doing this just with the local version, but if you're doing this against the CTF, it will have a secure WebSocket connection. So you'll need to change that to WSS from WS. That's the first change that you'll need. Another change is the script that we just saw there was using SQL Lite. And if you try to run this one with SQL map, it will freeze whenever it gets a negative value because we're using MySQL this time. And I guess the syntax is slightly different, it causes some issues. So you'll also need to update the script to basically say, if the payload starts with a negative value, then just skip it and move to the next one. SQL map will still work, but if you don't have this in, it's just not gonna finish and you're not gonna end up retrieving the data. In order to determine that, it's probably a good idea to send the SQL map request through Burp Suite so you can actually see where it's getting stuck. 
which is how I debugged this in the first place. Let us run the SQL map proxy. And now it's just waiting for us to send requests to localhost 9999. So I'm going to paste in this SQL map command. So that's where we're sending it to. We're not sending it to the remote server. We're sending it to the proxy, which is then going to forward those requests on and get the response back. And I'm also proxying it through Burp Suite just so that we can have a look at the traffic. Now, you might try to dump the whole database, but I think the description was a hint that we want to get that last bug report. So to save time, particularly against a remote server, it's a good idea to specify the table. And you could also specify the column if you wanted. So the description is where it has the actual bug report. And we want ID 11 because we can already see 1 to 10, obviously. And that's about it. We want to just dump all this out. So if we start running that, we can keep an eye on what happens through here. Or we can go over to Burp and go into our, where is it, proxy, HTTP history. And we'll see this going through. So notice there was some negative values there. Okay, I've lost some now. But basically they'll get stuck. If you notice that getting stuck, that's kind of a hint that you might want to sort that out and try and add some condition in as we did in the script. And you'll get back this result. So it's not coming back with a flag, but it's basically a bug report from somebody who has said that they found a hidden endpoint. So this isn't easily brute forceable with like GoBuster or something. And they've worked out that the credentials on the endpoint are crypto cats. So the next part of the challenge then is for us to go and take a look at that endpoint. Let's take a copy of that and let's go to the page and we get this secure admin login. All right, so let's have a reminder what our credentials were. It was crypto with an O at the end and then cats, which is capital C for capital T Z. We log in and we get a message saying that we're on the configuration page, but the config fee, the config key that we're looking for is only viewable by the admin. So one of the things we might do here is have a look to see what cookies have been set because obviously we've just logged in. It must be tracking our session in some way and we'll find what looks like a JWT. So you can get an idea of that from the EYJ at the start. And maybe you'll go over to something like JWT.io and see what is in the token. We can just paste this in here and it's just got the identity set to crypto. So maybe if we can change that to admin or administrator or something like that, then we'll be able to access that config key. However, this is signed with the HS256 algorithm. So even if you try to change the algorithm to non or something like that, that attack won't work. We actually want to try and find out what the key is that's been used to sign the token. And to do that, we can use something like, well, we can actually use various tools. I'm going to use the JWT tool. And we can also just put in the token here to get that information back from it. And if we provide JWT, oh, let's do that again. Let's do dash H. We can go and have a look here and see, okay, we can actually crack keys. We can pass in a dictionary. And then if we work out what the key is, we'll be able to forge our own token and change that claim to admin. You could also use Hashcat or John the Ripper or something for this, but I'm just going to use the JWT tools. So what was it? It's crack. And then we want to use a dictionary. Um, this isn't a particularly hard key that we need to crack. So I'm just going to use the rock you word list. Shouldn't take more than a few seconds. And there we go. We find out that the key is cats are the best. So quite an easy key. doesn't take long to crack. And now we can just do this again and say that we actually want to inject a claim. So we can go and have a look through those options again if we want to. It's like inject claim and then we want to provide the type of signing option, which is HS256. And then we want to say the name of the claim we want to update and then the value that we want to update it with. So let's do this again and let us say we want to use the HS256 algorithm. And we also want to specify a password, which is cats are the best. We want to inject a claim, so that's capital I. And then our payload claim is identity. And then the value we want to update it with is admin. And that's going to create a new tampered token, which has been signed with the correct key, which means if we go back here and update the cookie, you can also just do this in Burp Suite or something as well if you want and refresh the page and now with the admin so we get access to the flag this is just the local version so it doesn't have the flag in it but that's basically how we solve this challenge
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this challenge and the CTF in general. I think this was kind of an easy to medium challenge, but obviously everybody's perspective is different. If you're very new to cybersecurity and CTFs, then you might have found it quite hard. It did have multiple parts to it, but I think each part was either on the easy or the medium side. Maybe the first part was more on the medium side, but you could find the solution to this very easily on like the Port Swigger Labs or something like that. I guess the first part required a little bit of modification to the proxy scripts that you could find online or would require you to make your own Python script or something, but I don't know, let's see how many solves it gets. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to let me know in the comments what your favorite challenge was. Did you get this one solved? Did you enjoy it? Did you like a particular category more than others? And what did you think of the CTF overall?